Word of Faith Netcast is on the air. Well, praise God, this is Dr. Bill Bailey, and this is the Word of Faith Netcast. Glad you could join us once again as we get into the Word of God concerning the fact that God is the one who brings increase. God is the one who brings favor. We're going to be talking about that today on the netcast, and I trust you're going to enjoy the message today. And uh, just to catch you up on a few things, of course, we've been talking about for some time now the SpeakFaith.tv project. And that is a Roku channel. I've talked to you about that before. Uh, as a matter of fact, if you go back on our broadcast, both on the website, which is, of course, wfm.org. I'll put that up here. And on our Roku channel, if you have a Roku device, you can go back and look at past programs, and you can listen to the report that I gave on speakfaith.tv and the testimony of how all that came to pass, praise the Lord. So I encourage you to do that. Right now, I just want to give you a little bit of an update, and that is, as I told you last time, Dr. Jerry Savell and his daughter, Terry Savell Foy, started on speakfaith.tv with their show, and of course they've had a TV show for some time. They've been in iTunes, they've been off their website, they're on a lot of different stations, on some satellite networks and so forth, but they started on speakfaith.tv recently, and there were a few little technical issues that had to be worked out. Uh, Their feed had an issue, and some of their videos and audio files were not available. So if you went into the Roku box, you went to speakfaith.tv, and you clicked on his programs, and... (laughs) It didn't work. (laughs) Well, uh, Brother Savelle's folks have gotten all that straightened out, and now all that's where it ought to be. And if you haven't been able to get them through iTunes, and you haven't been able to get them through SpeakFaith.tv, that is now fixed. So you can enjoy their video programs and audio programs once again. We've gotten all that taken care of. And we got some other news coming soon. (laughs) There are more speakers and ministers that are going to be starting on speakfaith.tv coming soon. We don't have all the details yet. I can't make any official announcements, but I can whet your appetite just a bit that they are coming. So hang in there. (laughs) Okay. Praise the Lord. All right. We're going to get into uh, the Word of God where we left off in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And we left off in verse 7 talking about Paul and Apollos. Paul is writing here. And Paul says, well, you know, who's Paul? Who's Apollos? Well, let's look at this. Verse 5. Who then is Paul and who is Apollos but ministers by whom ye believed, even as the Lord gave to every man? Notice the Lord does the giving of the ministry gifts. And we talked about this a little bit last time. But then he goes on and he says, Paul says, I have planted. So Paul said he planted. Apollos watered. But God gave the increase. Now, this is what I want you to see. Paul says, some of you are saying I'm a Paul. Some of you are saying I'm of Apollos. In other words, they're getting involved in personality cults. And, you know, it seems like the world likes to do that. We talked about that briefly. The world likes to do that. They get involved in following after a man, following after a person that is of note, that is well-known. And because of that, they lose track of the fact that we should be following the Lord. We should be imitating the Lord, not the man. Matter of fact, Paul even said, you can follow me as I follow Christ. In other words, (laughs) only thing worth following in my life is the fact that I follow the Lord Jesus Christ. So, let's look at verse 5 once again. Who is Paul, who is Apollos, but ministers by whom you believed as the Lord gave to every man. The Lord gave them as ministry gifts. The Lord gave them as gifts to the body of Christ. I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. Now I want to share with you a verse of scripture that uh, I heard on Brother Jerry Savelle's most recent program. He's been teaching on favor. And he and Terry were sharing about favor. And they shared this verse of scripture. 
And I thought, whoa, that fits right in with the teaching that we've been doing about God bringing the increase. So I want to get into this scripture. Let's go to Psalm 44, book of Psalms 44, and uh, we'll start in verse 2. How thou didst drive out the heathen with thy hand and plantest them. How didst thou afflict the people and cast them out? For they got not the land in possession by their own sword. Now, check this out. He's talking about the children of Israel. He said they didn't get the land they came into by their own sword. Neither did their own arm save them. But by thy right hand, by thine arm, and the light of thy countenance, because thou hast favor unto them. Ooh, think about that now. They got the land that they were promised, not because of their own sword. Now, they fought some enemies, but that was not the reason they got the land. Neither, neither did their own arms save them. Now they used their swords and they used their weapons and they did what they could in the natural, but that's not what got them the land. It wasn't your right hand or your arm that won the day. No, it was the Lord. He's the one that brings the increase. It's the, the Lord's arm, the light of his countenance, because he had favor unto them. God is your source. This is the key thing that I want you to see and understand. God is your source. Your job is not your source. Your spouse is not your source. Your, even your church and your pastor is not your source. They're a place to go to get fueled up, <laughs> to get taught, to get ministered to, but they're still not your source. Your source is the Lord. Your source is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God is your source. It's all because of him. It's not because of us. Now, where that to me becomes exciting is then it's not on me. Okay? It's not the strength of my arm that I have to rely on. It's not my great brilliant mind. You know, it's not whether or not I know all that I need to know and whether I'm uh, aware of all the permutations of all the plans and the plots and the schemes and the devices that may be going on at work or wherever. You know what I'm saying? It's not up to you and your ability. It's up to the Lord and His ability. He wins us the battles. See, that's why the Word of God talks about us being more than conquerors. How can you be more than a conqueror? You know, it's great to be a conqueror. No question about that. Being a conqueror is amazing and wonderful. Hallelujah. But being a conqueror means you had to go win the battle yourself. Kind of like talking about here the children of Israel. It, it would have been great if they'd have just gone out and won the battle on their own. But how much better is it to win the battle not because you won it with your own strength your own power your own knowledge your own ability because the Lord just favored you because he just blessed you because he just gave it to you you know I heard a minister one time talking about <laughs> he gave this example he said it's like the prize fighter goes into the ring fights the hardest fight of his career oh my goodness he's trained and he's prepared and he's sweated and he's He's done all that he can do. He gets into the ring, and the guy just about beats him, but he comes back at the last minute, and he delivers a haymaker, and my goodness, he wins the battle. He wins the fight. And they, you know, put the robe around him there at the end, and they lift up his arm, and the, and the ref, you know, says, you're the winner, and they come, and they bring him the trophy, and they bring him the money that he won, and he turns around, and gives the money to his wife. His wife <laughs> is more than a conqueror. <laughs> this guy, her husband, is the conqueror. He won, but she got the benefit without having to train, without having to sweat, without having to run up and down steps like in the Rocky movie, you know. 
<laughs> without having to do all of that. She was at home and came, maybe came see him at the fight. Sipped on a Coke <laughs> out in the audience and then got the reward. Now, praise the Lord. She's more than a conqueror. She got the benefit without having to fight the battle herself. She let her husband fight the battle. All right? Well, here it is, us and the Lord. God wins the victory for us and then gives us the benefit. Now, you say, well, you know, Dr. Bill, that's just not fair to God. Yeah, but you know what? It's because he loves us so much. Because he so favors us, we are the apple of his eye. We are very important people in the eyes of the Lord. I mean, after all, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him, well, I'm a whosoever, I believe on him, whosoever believeth on him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Well, I didn't deserve everlasting life in the natural, based on my own ability, righteousness, all of that. I, I didn't deserve it. Tell you a secret, I still don't. <laughs> Amen. But my deserving of that comes from what the Lord Jesus Christ did. And because of what he did, now it's been given to me and now, it's not that I deserve it, but I now have that benefit fully paid for by the Lord Jesus Christ. And my identification is in Him, not in me. Do you understand that? My identification is not, well, Dr. Bill Bailey has a doctorate in theology, and so he is qualified. No. You know, I heard, you know, what you hear, <laughs> you know, Jesus said, take heed what you hear, and he also said, take heed how you hear. And, and I know the reason for that very well, because what you hear is what you meditate on, and what you meditate on is what it comes out of your mouth and what you end up preaching. I heard Brother Kenneth Copeland, I say all that to say this. I heard Brother Kenneth Copeland, and, uh, uh, wow, can't think of the guy's name. Barton, yes, <laughs> praise the Lord. Uh, David Barton, amen, just my mind just slipped away. But David Barton and Brother Copeland last week were talking about um, a lot of different things. I mean, they were getting into some of the political issues of the day and all kinds of other things and history of, of America and, and, and different things along that line. And it was a tremendous study. And by the way, uh, if you have not heard those messages, you can, if you have a Roku box, you can go on uh, and uh, his Believer's Voice of Victory Roku channel, and there's a thing where you can watch the entire week of programs without all of the commercials and the announcements and everything of just the teaching part. You can actually get a week at a time and hear those messages. And, and actually, that's what I was doing in this case. I was listening to that whole week of messages in one session. And uh, boy, that, that really, it builds on itself when you do that. So I was listening along, and he was talking about uh, how America was founded. He was talking about favor. He was talking about the political system. He was talking about some of the very things that we're talking about here. As a matter of fact, some of the things that I'm sharing here, basically I got directly from those series of programs and from some things that Brother Savelle has been talking about. So it all just it all just came together, praise the Lord, and I appreciate that. So at any rate, I was talking about the benefit. Talking about benefits that are yours that you haven't earned but they're still your benefits you are a citizen of this country and you have certain rights and certain privileges based on your citizenship but you have to participate in that citizenship and they were encouraging believers to vote in the upcoming elections 
not based on man, not based on personality, but based on what the stand of those, the two different parties, major parties here in the United States, what they are teaching, what they are saying, what they are standing for. Basically what they stand for is what we should be voting for. And my pastor said something about that this morning, as a matter of fact, same, same thought, same direction, and that's this. You may be swayed, we were talking about cult of personality. You may be swayed by people's personality. Oh, they may look charismatic, you know, they may look, uh, have a big smile, and, and look very uh, professional, and knowledgeable, and so forth. All of those things. And you may be moved by that. And you may be directed to a certain degree by that, and you shouldn't be, because that's all outward appearance. That doesn't have anything to do with what they actually stand for, what they actually believe, and what they actually would do were they in office. Okay? All of that to say this. You have to participate in the electoral process in order to fully exercise your rights and privileges as a citizen of this country. You need to do what is at hand to do. In this case, it's vote. And as believers, and I'll just take a moment to say this during this particular teaching, even though it's a little bit off topic, it's important for you to be praying about the upcoming elections, and it's important for you to vote in that election and get other believers to vote in this election that's upcoming in November, which is not that far away, about Wow, probably two months or so from now. So you need to do what is at hand to do. You need to vote. Now, we were talking about cult of personality. We're talking about how people look good, sound good, make you feel good, you know. Well, none of that has to do with the reality of the situation. David Barton, I said all that, again, to get into this. David Barton made the statement, it doesn't matter what the qualifications of a person appear to be. They may look like, you know, okay, they've got a doctorate, all those kinds of things, that's great. He said, we should no longer be moved by credentials. We should be moved by truth. Think about that. Don't be moved by credentials. Be moved by truth. There are certain things that are true. Now, he made the statement as an example when he was talking along there with Brother Copeland that a lot of experts look at him and say, oh, you, you, this is just a hobby to you. You're not a professional. You don't have a degree. You don't have the background that I do. And he said, well, it doesn't matter if what I'm saying is true. And so they were trying to make, these experts were trying to make the statement that America, well in this particular case, that a college founded by Jefferson was a secular university and that it was the first major college in the United States and, and it was a secular university and they didn't teach any form of, of Christian teaching, the Bible, religion, anything along that line in that university. And he said, gentlemen, wait just a minute. And he went over there in the library, he went over in the library and he pulled out two newspapers that were published at the time that Jefferson founded the university. In effect, it's like going back in time and getting that day's paper because they had them there in the, in the uh, library archived. So he simply walked over and picked up those papers, brought them over, laid them on the table, and showed them to the experts and said, look at this ad for his university. The guy, you know, they were claiming that they had no chaplains at this university when it was founded. This was like an ad from the very first week it, it had been founded, and they were advertising for new students. And it was written by the chaplain of the university that they said didn't exist. Oh, they're experts. They have doctorates. But the truth was that the chaplain of Jefferson's University 
wrote the ad saying, if you're a minister of the gospel, come to this university because your tuition will be fully covered. It'll be free. We want you to come because we want to support the ministry. <laughs> now, the, the secular humanist experts are trying to say that Jefferson was against Christianity and didn't want it taught in his university, and yet they're giving tuition free to ministers because they want to support the ministry. <laughs> and then it goes on to detail all the courses that were going to be taught from the Bible. This is all in the papers of that day. Irrefutable, indisputable evidence of what actually happened, what is the truth. Do you see that? It's the truth. <laughs> and these guys were like, well, <laughs> no, uh, we're experts. We, uh, we know, we understand. We know what Jefferson truly intended and what his, uh, his thought was at that. <laughs> guys, <laughs> truth. <laughs> this is evidence. This is truth. doesn't matter who I am that I'm the one that brought it to your attention. It's simply true. You should be moved by what's true. <laughs> Not by credentials. You may say, well, I'm just an old hayraker, you know, I'm an old cow hand from Texas. That's what they were telling David Barton. But he said, doesn't matter who I am. Doesn't matter if I wash the dishes in the back. I bring you this paper. You read it. You see it. It's truth. Be moved by truth. <laughs> Not by credentials. So see, we get back into this issue of the cult of personality. People go, oh, yes, you know. I've had people tell me, oh, Dr. Bill, you have a doctorate in theology. You understand things that I can't possibly understand because, oh, look at you. You have all these books behind you. They, oh, my goodness. <sighs> Folks, okay, I got a degree. I did some study. That's great. Don't belittle that. But it doesn't make what I'm teaching more or less true just because I got a DR dot in front of my name. <laughs> or a PhD at the end of my name. <laughs> it doesn't make it any more or less true. It's just simply that I went to the trouble and time and effort and energy to get a degree. But the truth is still the truth. The Bible's still the Bible. And it still says exactly what it says, whether I'm saying it or a guy who can barely read stumbles through a scripture and tells you something. It's what the Bible says. <laughs> it's the truth. <laughs> and so this story that David told really struck me. I'm like, you know, <laughs> he's got a point. Credentials should move us. Truth should move us. So here's where I'm coming from when I'm talking about this whole election deal, and that's this. You can give great speeches, and you can say a lot of great things, but the bottom line is this. What do you actually stand for? And there's a document. Now, this is just a piece of paper I'm holding. But let's just pretend that this document, that this is the platform of a particular party. I can take that document and I can read it and I can find out exactly what they believe, what they stand for, what is the truth of their platform. So here's what I, encourage, I would encourage you to do. First of all, pray. Definitely pray. Listen to the Holy Ghost, okay? Let him tell you which way you ought to vote. I'm not going to tell you how to vote. You pray and find out. But if you want to do some study, don't find out about the personality and the credentials of the man. Go to the party platform and see what it says. See which party's platform lays out whether it is, uh, lines up with the truths of God's Word. Truth is truth. Bible is Bible. What God encourages and stands for is what God encourages and stands for. And you can read those documents and find out which way to go. See what I'm saying? Now, I'm going to tell you which one I think is the way to go. I'm telling you, go do the research and find it and study it out for yourself because you will find out which way to go based on truth. 
based on what God wants you to do. And ultimately, that's how this thing works. God is the one who brings the increase. God is the one that brings the favor. God is the one that wins the victory. So we ought to be siding with him and his agenda and his plan. You see what I'm saying? There's a lot of people today saying, we don't have to do anything. We can just sit back and enjoy. Well, you know, Pastor Ed this morning when he was teaching made a very good point. I thought it was an excellent point. He talked about how uh, Jesus, after he was raised from the dead, came to Peter and said, Peter, do you love me? And Peter said, well, Lord, you know I love you. He said, all right, then feed my sheep. And then he said it the second time. He said, Peter, do you love me? And Peter said, Lord, you know that I love you. Well, then feed my lambs. And then the third time, he says to Peter, Peter, do you love me? And Peter is really upset now. He said, Lord, you know everything. <laughs> Surely you know that I love you. Peter said, feed, uh, Jesus said, feed my lambs. Now, I'd always heard that story and listened to it and thought a lot of different things, but here's the point that Pastor Ed brought out that I really liked. He said, there are a lot of people today that are, you know, I live under grace, and so I don't have to do what the Bible says. I live under grace. I don't have to tithe. I live under grace. I don't have to go to church. Blah, blah, blah. They say all these things, and then when you question them about it at all, they say, well, the Lord knows my heart. Sound a little bit like Peter. Lord, you know my heart. And Jesus is saying, then do what I told you to do. See? Do you get it? The light bulb go off? <laughs> if you love me, do what I told you to do. If you love me, Jesus said, keep my commandments. Amen? And that's exactly what we're talking about. The Lord's got a tremendous amount of benefits, and he will win the battle for you every time, and he will give you favor every time, but you've got to do what you are called to do, what he's speaking to you to do. Amen? Praise the Lord. Well, we're out of time. Woo. We're really, really running tight on time. So we'll stop here and pick up next time on God being the God of increase. Praise the Lord. All right. You can write me here at Word of Faith Ministries. Word of Faith Ministries, our address is P.O. Box 5213-5213, High Point, North Carolina. The zip code 27262. You can also write me at my email address. My email address is drbill, D-R-B-I-L-L, -L, at wofm.org. Of course, our website is wofm.org. stands for Word of Faith Ministries. ORG, of course, being a nonprofit organization, go to that website. We've got teaching, we've got audio messages, we've got video messages, we've got articles, we've got what we believe that actually has a Bible study with each thing, each step of what we believe, and I encourage you to check that out. Join us again next time. Remember, until then, to fulfill the Word of God. The Word of Faith Netcast is brought to you by Word of Faith Ministries and our partners around the world.